Today, we're gonna take a cheap foam glider and turn it into a pretty awesome remote control airplane and prove that anybody can get into RC flight. Welcome back to the King of Random, I'm Jake. The twist is that I am a complete RC noob. I have never owned, built, or flown a remote control aircraft before. I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing, and if I can figure it out, so can you. Let's grab some materials. I found two different sizes of foam gliders. One much larger, four and a half foot wingspan. First we gotta get them both out and put them together. Holy goodness, that's huge. I'll give both of them a test flight but I already know which one I want to use. Oh yeah, the big one's the one. I may have also crashed it and it immediately broke. Now this whole idea started when I was scrolling Amazon and came across this listing of an RC airplane kit containing a motor, prop, some servos, and an ESC. Basically, almost everything you need to create a fully functioning remote control flying machine, and I've always wanted to get into RC stuff, so this seemed like a great opportunity. We'll also need a controller. I bought the cheapest one that had good reviews. By the way, all these items are linked in the description, so you can use the same parts I did. And we'll need a battery of some kind to power the whole apparatus. This was the only bit that was a little bit more difficult to figure out. I was kind of guessing, because... There's all these confusing numbers like volts and milliamps, you know. But I settled on a 11.1 volt, 220 milliamp hour LiPo battery, which seems too big. So back to Amazon it is. 1300 milliamp hours, that sounds better. See, milliamp hours or amp hours or watt hours is just the amount of electricity the battery can supply over a certain amount of time. We will need tape, some wire to attach the servos to the control surfaces. I found large paper clips work great for this. Charger to charge the battery. And finally, we'll need some either cardboard or in my case, I'm gonna use some poster board to make our control surfaces out of. Here's the plan. We're gonna cut the nose of the plane off and we're gonna attach the motor and propeller there. That seems like the best spot. Regular planes seem to have five control surfaces, if I'm remembering correctly. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, five control surfaces. However, the kit only gives us two servos. But then again, we should only need two control surfaces because we only need two axes of movement, up, down, and left, right. The battery will be the last thing we attach, and we'll do that last because we'll use the actual mass of the battery to adjust the plane's center of gravity. First things first, we need to mount our engine. And to do that, we're gonna need to chop the very front of the nose off. Oh, I hate styrofoam. The kit gives us a few different pieces. This, I'm not even quite sure what to call it. I think what it's called is a chuck, like on a drill goes into the motor, then you stick your propeller on over the screw, and then the cap screws on over that. Mounting it to the nose of the aircraft might be a little challenging. We could just try to glue it right to it. Actually, just gluing the back end of the motor to the nose of the plane is not going to work because, as you can see, there's a little bearing inside there, and the hot glue was clogging up the bearings so the propeller wouldn't turn freely. So what we actually need to do is figure out some sort of back plate that we can screw the motor to, and then the back plate we will glue to the front of the plane. And now it's time to start wiring everything up so we know where exactly uh, everything is going to be. Let's get the controller. That looks important. Definitely gonna need to watch a YouTube video on how to do this. I assume that plugs into that, so that'll stretch back here. The, the battery will plug into that somehow. This will plug th that, and then I don't have any idea how this works. While past Jake spends precious minutes watching a YouTube video on RC electronics, future Jake is gonna tell you what he learned. Starting with the battery. The battery is plugged into the Electronic Speed Controller, or ESC. Think of the ESC like a glorified adapter that supplies the correct voltage to everything. It sends 11.1 volts to the motor and 5 volts to the receiver and the servos. The receiver! Your controller comes with two parts, a transmitter and a receiver. The ESC and the servos plug into the receiver. The receiver receives the signal from the transmitter and tells the ESC to tell the motor to run or the servos to turn on. The receiver comes with a number of ports called channels, channel 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc, etc. Those channels map to controls on the transmitter. I'll plug it in to give you a short demo. Okay, the transmitter syncs up to the receiver. If you want a slightly more in-depth overview, watch the video I have linked in the description. 
Let's talk for a minute about where the control surfaces should be on this plane. But what comes to my mind is to do two wing flaps on the main wing. So if you flip them both up, the air resistance should cause more lift. If you flip them both down, it should cause resistance on the bottom, causing the plane to go downwards. And then if you have one of them flipped up and one of them flipped down, it should bank into a turn. I really have no idea how well that will work. We're just gonna have to test it and see what happens. The servos come with several different shaped control arms. For our purposes, we're gonna use this one. It's designed so that that little control arm clicks right down onto the gear. I'm literally just gonna hot glue the servo right to the wing, just like that. Grab your tape, just tape the ESC in place. I don't wanna glue it in place just in case I have to move it. Make sure the cables can reach. We should be able to glue or tape the receiver in place. Plug the servos back in. Channel one, channel two. Onto the control surfaces, grab your poster board. I'm not sure how big these control surfaces should be. You know what? The ruler will make it easy. We'll make them 12 inches long. So it'll look about like that. 12 inches, 12 inches. What does two inches look like? Hmm, two and a half inches seems like a lot. We're gonna start with two and a half inches. If it's too long, we can cut it down. Pull out a uh, close to 12 inch strip. Take half the duct tape and stick it to the flap so that half the duct tape is on the flap and half the duct tape is off, just like this and tape it to the top of the wing. Make sure to give yourself a little bit of space between the flap and the wing so that it has enough clearance to bend downward. <laughs> we are going to cut little triangles out of this poster board, shaped just like that. For strength, I'm gonna double them up and glue them together like so. No, 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 almost I glued it to my table. But I have just found a problem. This poster board it's not solid enough and the wire, the wire is gonna end up cutting through the poster board. That's a problem. A problem for which I do not have a solution. Allow me a moment to think. One eternity later. I went and found a little bit of plastic from a soda bottle. If we glue that to this, that'll keep the wire from cutting through the poster board. Brilliant! And we are going to glue those little triangles onto the control surface. We want the hole, the point the wire connects to, to be as close to the pivot as possible. If you put it at the back away from the pivot, it wouldn't pull the wing up like this. The force would end up pulling in line with the wing and it just wouldn't work. We want it long enough to bend that around and attach the servo, it's more than long enough. Take some pliers and put a good 90 degree bend like so. That side will go right there. Bend the other side over, slide it through, bend it so it won't come loose. And with that, holy moly, are we done? Okay, we're so close, we're so close. I hear beeping and nothing else is working. Maybe I should read the instructions. Ha, huh, what a novel thought. That is in Chinese. I might have it figured out. I think the polarity of one of the wires was flipped upside down. That shouldn't hurt anything. It just isn't supposed to work, so that's it. It's connected, it's connected. It's set up right now to work off of rudder and aileron control on the tail. But I need it to be set up to have both of these tied to up and down, and both of them set to, you know, when you make a turn, one of them goes down, one of them goes up. And there's a preset setting for that. Now suddenly both control surfaces are tied together, and they move together. Heck yeah! Whoa. That's legitimately scary, it's actually powerful. Your center of gravity needs to be roughly at the point where your airfoil wing is thickest. Looking at the edge of the wing, that's roughly right there. That's just a general rule of thumb. If you go ahead and hold the plane at that point, it's way too nose heavy. So we're going to want to mount the battery. Let's see where it balances. Apparently that wants to balance right about there. That seems pretty perfect. Battery mounted, center of gravity adjusted. We're ready to fly. All right, kids. First test flight, I'm optimistically, cautiously optimistic. I guess we just gotta find out. So I'm just gonna start the motor and then throw it. Probably put about half power so I feel thrust. Here goes nothing. Well, that was to be expected. The main thing I'm suddenly worried about is I only have one spare propeller, so if I break them both, we're in trouble.
Well, we have enough power. The steering was not responsive at all. And we need a bigger location. Oh no, no, no. The propeller is bent, otherwise, looks like we're in good shape. Bend it back a little bit. Okay. We're okay so far. I think it can fly straight pretty well. I wanna see if I can do a banking turn. But we don't really have much room in this location. We might need to go somewhere different. That sucked. I think I'm sensing a problem, which is that I really don't have much control. It's a glider and it's designed to be stable. So if it's just going in a straight line, it's level, it's staying in the air, but Anytime I have to correct, it's just not wanting to correct. Oh, that didn't sound good. Let's go back inside and assess the damage. The idea that your plane is controlled by two flaps, those flaps are mounted on the wing rather than the tail, is one that I've seen work on flying wing designs, like the new Stealth Bomber. But I failed to take into consideration one thing, leverage. You see, a plane is essentially a lever with the fulcrum wherever your center of gravity is. In the case, this plane is right here. This would be your lever arm. Think of it like trying to move something with a lever, but instead of grabbing the lever at the end out here, you instead grab the lever right here. You have a lot less leverage. It's gonna take a lot more force to move whatever mass you're trying to move. Flying wings are actually notoriously unstable, kind of because of that, but also they try to move their levers as far back as possible. The center of gravity for the flying wing is here, and the lever arms are moved back towards the back of the plane as far as you can possibly put them. Because these flaps are mounted so close to the center of gravity of the plane, they just don't have enough leverage to have much control over it at all. Fortunately, there's a simple fix, and that's just moving back. So a few changes made. First of all, I did reinforce it. Now it's, it's pretty solid back there. But then the main changes is we have a rudder and an elevator on the tail. I remapped the control to be correct. So we've got left and right and up and down. I hope this works better than last time. It should, how can it not? Three, two, one. I'm an idiot and I uh, pushed the elevator. <laughs> I tried to go up, but I pushed it the wrong direction and just nosedived it immediately. The good news is I know the control surfaces work because that was an immediate, very fast reaction. Give me a minute, let's fix the plane. Pretty easy fix, all we gotta do is hot glue it back together. So we're just waiting on the hot glue gun to heat up and we'll be back in business take two whoo i'm nervous okay three two one The thing I love about this plane is when it breaks into a million pieces, you just hot glue it back together. <laughs> I'm slowly just covering it with popsicle sticks and skewers. No! Okay, the controls are very touchy. I'm gonna get some scissors and trim off some of the control surfaces. They're way too big and it's reacting too fast for me to really control it well. I also need to just get it higher off the ground. I keep flying it too low. So anytime like a bit of wind takes it, it just crashes. I don't have enough time to adjust. I'm gonna try to get a little bit of a running start. Oh, that was it. That's it. That was, that was pilot error. I, I crashed it, but it, that was actually working. It definitely is a little bit challenging to fly because you don't have banking control. So you have to control that with the rudder. And if you like overcorrect too quickly, which is what I did there, it will just b keep banking and crash. I could have saved it, except I, I'm not used to these controls. <laughs> I just need to get some more practice flights in because I still have no clue how to fly an airplane. See you back at the studio. 
So how long did it take me to actually build it? The actual construction alone, I did that in under two hours. It took me about another hour to figure out the controller and the controller settings and all that stuff, because that's confusing. Of course, that's not counting all the adjustments I had to make later because my initial design was just dumb. But since you've watched this video, you won't make the same mistakes I did. So for you to do it, it would only take you two hours. Anyway, until next time, see you then. Jake out.